Hey guys, it's boy here, and these are things I learned with Miracle Spectre. So in this game, Miracle knows he's going to have a tough time, they have a jungler in their team. In case Dyer decided to go dual lanes, his farm will suffer a lot, and that's why his initial item build is so region based. You can also note that he does not have a quelling blade there, a clear sign he was afraid of the lane setup from them. I also like the fact he learns dispersion at level 2 instead of desolate. Not only he's getting harassed all the time, he can't use desolate at all in this lane. Well thought. To be honest, what I want to focus in this laning stage is Jakiro's skill set. People still insist in getting liquid fire at level 1 in the hero because it doesn't use mana, but it it's a shitty skill. For the love of god, stop doing this. Just read the skills. While Liu deal 100 damage in AoE slowing both attack speed and move speed with dual breath in a 10 second cooldown, with liquid fire you deal half that damage without slowing move speed with a really short AoE and yeah, the first option uses mana, but at least you can secure kills and deal more damage. You can actually land the skill on enemies unlike Ice Path that Jakiro also learned and this clip really showcases how Jakiro's skill build destroys Miracle's laning phase. Yeah, they are against an okay dual lane. Silencer can harass a little bit, but with the combined slow of dagger and level 2 dual breath, they would have a kill on Silencer every time. What ends up happening is that Miracle just wasted his mana, took lots of harass for nothing, while the offlaners just region in the shrine and come back. I don't feel like you always should max dual breath, but the skill does scale very well, and is probably the best skill at level 1 for Jakiro with very few exceptions. I mean, if you don't believe me, you can fight Puppy. These are two replays of his. In both of these replays, he starts with dual breath. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to find more replays, but no one even plays the hero anymore. But please guys, just learn dual breath at level 1, please. For the love of god. Since the laning phase went so bad for a miracle, you can see him going for Elm of the Dominator before face boots to get more region. To be honest, I don't know if he usually gets the item anyways, only in a different order, or if Helm of the Dominator is just a crutch to deal with the fact he needs to stay in the lane and get levels. I saw him testing tons of builds from Urn to Vanguard first. With that skill build, Jakiro can't really deal with the aggression coming from the enemy offlane, so he leaves Miracle there to get more experience. Something a lot of supports and carry players just forget is possible. Of course, if Miracle wants to be alone here, he needs to step his region game up, so he finishes headrest and brings more tangles. The problem is that sometimes you ask your support to leave and he doesn't understand that he's useless in that lane and he's actually leeching your experience. Or when you're a support and you can't deal with the enemy offlane and he just spam pings you that you just abandon him, when in reality that was the best play possible. But anyways, let's keep going. A fairly interesting clip happens after that, a silencer casts last word, instead of trying to run away with the debuff, he commits dagger ASAP. A lot of people don't know about this, but when you cast a spell under the effect of last word, even though you get silenced and slowed right away, the enemies lose shared vision of you, which works great with spectral dagger. In the end, he tried to go against Magnus and see if he could trade his life, but Jakiro ends up snatching that up. Sometimes I feel like the biggest difference between really good players and okay players item build-wise is not necessarily which items they go for, but in what order. I'm not sure if I'm expressing myself correctly here. If you pay attention to Miracle's items, first he was going face, gave up on it, and went to Helm of the Dominator, then midway decided to stop for an Iron Talon before finishing the item. Why? Well, ideally he would like to farm the jungle of dominated creeps after Magnus or Silencer gets level 6 in the lane, because it will get too dangerous. He was not able to farm so much during the laning phase to finish Helm of the Dominator in time, at least he felt like it wasn't going to be possible. So Iron Talon is a cheaper item that attempts to do the same thing. Pay attention how he goes to the jungle seconds before Magnus gets level 6. Of course, with Iron Talon and being a squishy specter, he can't farm large camps yet, so he goes for the small ones. I am not the biggest fan of Helm of the Dominator and specter because to get the most value out of the item, you usually need to send the creep you dominated towards someone you want to kill, and enemies can just stay under the tower at this stage of the game, or maybe you just need to ult when your creep is not there yet. For some reason though, Lion wasn't feeling like it, and after spending his cooldowns on a satyr, Miracle can easily capitalize on the item. Radiance top tower is under attack. I will. Dyer 
To be honest, watch the Seder again. Most players will try to start that engagement with Heiduken and afterwards commit ult right away. The thing though is that Miracle is faced with two major problems. If he wants to engage on Lion, Lion can kill his Hound Illusion instantly. At the same time, if he hunts as fast as possible, he can still be stunned and not get the kill. Pay attention how he abuses the fact that Lion's channeling wants kill to go in immediately. He also casts another Hadouken before joining and then there's no counterplay possible. I was actually joking about Lion guys, he was probably trying to bait Haunt and kill the Illusion really fast with Hex. No luck for him though, since Silencer also shows up, crispy double kill for Miracle. After watching the next minutes of play, Miracle's decisions made a lot of sense. I did talk about it in my anti-mage video. Helm of the Dominator seems to be the new Vanguard that has more damage and aggressive potential. You can go either Vanguard or Helm of the Dominator, make an Iron Talon and keep jungling without spending mana while maintaining relatively high HP so that you can assist your team with Haunt when needed. So does this mean that Vanguard is a dead item? I don't think so, I saw Miracle playing with the item, the main difference I saw in the team composition when he goes Vanguard is being against strong melee cores. A lot of people don't know this, but the further away the enemies are from you, the less damage you're going to reflect with dispersion. In this game, you can even argue that he's against strong melee cores, but Juggernaut won't be damaged during Omni Slash or Blade Fury. So against the Meepo, once, he went Vanguard and maxed dispersion before maxing Desolate. Both items accomplish the same thing, being able to farm the jungle until you go Radiance. The difference is that Helm of the Dominator synergizes better with Desolate, after all, you get more attack speed. And Vanguard works better with the other passive. I want to commend Miracle in not joining that fight. It's not uncommon to see people committing a haunt first, then assessing whether the fight is a good one to take or not. It's pretty clear he won't be able to kill anyone there, but his team can fight when they respawn. RP and Global were committed, they have Black Hole. If Miracle ults there, maybe he can get one kill, but he has no TP on him, so he's probably going to die. And not only that, but more importantly, during the downtime of the enemy's cooldowns, they are going to play passive. It's very hard to not press the button though, you know there's the chance of being flamed, but I feel like this was a fight he shouldn't partake. In this game though, he actually used the downtime of Dire's cooldowns to finish Radiance, which is fine as well. I guess trying to fight so close to Radiance is probably dumber than using Halt in that last engagement. I really like some of the paths he takes with Spectral Dagger to waste less time, this one... and this one. One thing to note during this replay is that Miracle didn't ult a lot of times. The way you should act playing the Radiance build is very different from the old Batman style. Spectre indeed can get early kills with Haunt, but that's the exact reason why the Batman style goes for very small items like Urn, Yasha and Manta. You can afford to die and keep your item progression. When you're going Radiance, you really need that huge power spike in an adequate timing, so you should be more wary of how you use your skill. I did talk about downtime of Global Silence and RP a while back, and this clip here showcases how you can abuse that, this time with Radiance ready. So Miracle was farming and since he's on the enemy territory, he sends his creep in the high ground that spots the enemies going towards him, giving him time to run, dodge RP, force global silence and kill Lion. At first sight you're going to say, oh Miracle's so bad he fed to the enemy team. Why is he farming there? Dying was a mistake. How you capitalize on your enemies and your own mistakes, though, says a lot about you. So look how everyone from Radiant is postured around that tier 2. As soon as Miracle responds, he ults, there's no way the Dire team can react to that play, and suddenly, the team that was quote unquote winning lost tier 2, has no good ways of defending the mid lane, while Radiant still has Black Hole ready. And in my opinion, this is one of the main strengths of Spectre that players don't really utilize. Instead of wasting Haunt in bad fights, try to capitalize on the fights the enemy team actually wins. Especially if they have big cooldowns like Global Silence, RP, Ravage. Another thing I want to point out is Miracle going straight Manta after Radiance. This is not uncommon at all, but sometimes Spectres go Diffusal after Radiance. You can't purge yourself anymore, so against Silencer he really needs Manta. Most of the time he ults, Global will be ready, and if Silencer ults right away, he won't be able to jaunt to his illusions. Since Miracle still doesn't have Manta, what he wants to do is fight before Silencer respawns, since in this clip right here his team started fighting without him being there. Look how he set up this fight, he sends his creep towards the mid lane where they are pushing, right in time to ult before Silencer respawns. That combined with Amber going towards where he was to see if he can get a kill ends up working very well. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are falling.
Since the silencer shows up and Enigma was alive, pretty close to him, they end up killing him again without global silence being committed. That gives Miracle Manta another tier 1 and he's finally back into the game. Guys, I know this is getting old, but tomorrow I'm going to start casting. I'm actually going to cast the well play Invitationals. So please tune in and just give me your feedback, tell me what you think. And let's just watch some crispy Dota together. In the next day, I'm casting another game, and this time I will be giving an Arcana away. So the only thing you need to actually win the Arcana is being subscribed to my Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, and be online watching the stream. Well, this wraps up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please guys give it a thumbs up. If you want to see the extended version of this video, please check the link in the description. Pugna is a platform where you can learn from people like Chessy, Fogged, Monib, and get better at the game. They have now great content on the new patch, and if you want to raise your MMR, this is a great time. Just figure out the patch faster than your friends and get those easy wins. Well, he killed SF because he blocks him there, right? Allowing Underlord to hit lots of Firestorm procs on him. But did you catch why he traps him there? Illusion Rune Illusions are way tankier than normal PL Illusions. If we go back to SF's final moments, you will see that they even survive against that race he throws at them. So you agree that if the Illusions died way earlier, maybe SF had a chance to survive, right? Look how Sumeo engages on SF. He only pops the Illusion Rune after the close range race, and in hindsight, that seems correct, but minor, right? 